Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First of all, I would like to express the thanks to Professor Takara for inviting me for this event. And I'm very glad to see that the new chair will be very much enhancing the potential UNESCO network in the sustainability science, I would say, because the situation concerning sustainability is complex but not hopeless. It needs a very, very intensive work, simply because we are using 150% of potential of our Earth. Ecological footprint is just increased to such level. And that's why it's not enough now to just only protect the environment. We urgently need to increase, enhance sustainability potential. And just this is only possible through the way, change of way of thinking from structure of nature protection to process regulation by regulation and process. And processes can be only understood when we integrate different sciences, like a mission of the new center is holistic approach. And as Professor Takara underlined, there will be integration of the of the this different discipline with big capital of knowledge I which exists here. OK, now why ecohydrology? Because ecohydrology has a is a so-called science which offer more for less. It means just less energy, less capital, po financial potential, and more results. And I would like to try to uh, give a few examples. So first of all, as I said, we already changed very much our biosphere. And we are not quite understand what we are doing with biosphere. And for example, solution like geoengineering to compensate global change is uh, not really subject of trial and error approach, should not, never be, because we cannot transfer ourselves to the Mar Mars or Moon. OK, so, and ecology in combination with hydrology explaining why, for example, some process has a nonlinear character. And understanding this is giving a fundamental to start to regulate system. And now, situation is complex because legal system, politics, and, re and the in the range of non-material values, moral, and beliefs changes much slower than economic processes. And especially environmental law, for example, and I environmental knowledge about sustainability. So, and why water is so important? Because it's simple major determinant of biological biopotential of biosphere. Mm -hmm. And this is an example from my Spanish colleague, Professor Lamas. What happens if the groundwater resources in Mediterranean climate were exploited too intensively? You see in the Niana Park. However, when they stop, reduce exploitation by 30%, ecosystem recover very fast. In three years, you see we have already have a bioproductivity, biodiversity return. So equilibria are very dynamic, and still we have big po potential for regeneration. And this is showing that if we have a profound understanding complex system, water, biota, society, we can really start to enhance uh, potential. Uh, what we have done with climate and water nutrient cycle, because this is key for sustainable future as well. First of all, we accelerate water outflow from the, to the sea from agriculture and urban landscape. And if the water become limiting, the acceleration outflow is not really a wise idea. Uh, by, for example, straightening the river. We change the carbon nutrient cycles, redu reducing organic carbon amount in catchment in the sky soils. Why? Because if we unify the landscape, landscape wind is accelerating, drying the soil. We are losing organic matter, which is light fraction. And third element, these processes reduce the productivity, resilience, ecosystem, and other things, and process. And we can see soil degradation in the world 
which is strictly dependent on the water resources and water retentiveness in the catchment. Climate change will make situation more complicated if we not change the, the pattern. And this is example from Europe. You see the, the economic kind of, uh, let's say, lack of coherence in the European Union is generating like this. Agricultural uh, farmers get uh, money proportionally to the surface. So he clean up landscape from the all shelter belts, three rows, land water ecotons destroyed here with three roads and in 10 years he lose a loss organic matter and get the sand like a desert organic matter go down and eventually because ecotone buffering zone destroyed also nutrients which he's putting here and organic rest of organic matter going to the river and what he's doing is generating toxic algal bloom of course this is not only poland this is africa tanganyika lake my one of my programs so it's broadly in this pro such a process appearing broadly. so we have to keep in mind that you want to keep the water and generally sustainability of catchment we have to start thinking from the terrestrial phase of hydrological cycle because if we transfer this nutrients and organic matter water resources are changing like this eh? and we are losing all the ecological services so the, the problems can be, according to prediction, gets worse and worse. If you know that. So what is the problem? Sectoral approach, short-term benefits, long-term degradation. This example, for example, like in, in uh, Saudi Arabian exploitation, gr non available groundwater to for wheat production in temperature 40 degree plus in the desert. This is a beautiful method evaporating of, of water and losing the treasure from this, the same like you, you mentioned, this element loss of organic matter. And what in ecohydrology we think, how to regulate the system? First of all, always we need a model of processes. If we want to regulate, sometimes we have to understand how according to specific of the typology of ecosystem, in this moment typology is river continuum, different stream orders, and temperatures, different climatic zones, hierarchy diversity is changing. That's why, because there's no silver bullet approach, no one solution for all type of ecosystem. How, and that's, this model is showing that it is possible, it is necessary in different uh, phase of river, along the river continuum, different climatic, use completely different approach. For example, here, showing the river in Norway, in Scandinavia, the stocking of salmon, there has no sense because abiotic factors are so strong, the expenditure uh, energy according to the, because Bernoulli law showing what happens there, is, is necessary to improve habitats. And this was uh, implemented, this model in Norway, and four times fish uh, productivity increase immediately. So theoretical model is a kind of way of ordering our thinking about the system. And if we want to start to develop the systemic approach and system becomes more and more complicated because the man is diversifying, increasing impact and diversifying form of impact in this moment is a of course, empirical elements are also important. Ecohydrology background was started from, from manipulation of water level, which demonstrate that change of hydrological pattern in the reservoir has a big consequences for biological structure and reduction of the uh, zooplanktonivorous fish, dramatically increase resistance of the system to toxic algal blooms. And this was applied. This is model showing that in the river catchment of Pilica, algal blooms are proportional to phosphorus concentration in the river. Why? Because if it's wet here, lots, lots of rain, lots of phosphorus coming. If it's dry, rail, less phosphorus and no blooms. However, when we manipulate water level, we increase zooplankton biofiltration process. We reduce by half from biomass of algae. This, this uh, project still is progress and further data exists. So in this moment, cost zero. Only knowledge, understanding biota, hydrology, interaction can be, and many tools like this 
uh, can be developed. So, uh, of course, we we now coming to the called nature-based solution, but fundamentals, of course, are uh, eco-hydrology, which already was defined as use ecosystem properties as management tool. And, of course, in the context of catchment and use different nature-based solution has to be accumulated in for synergy, because if we do, do not put the synergy in catchment, very often some elements can be not not create uh, positive interplay. Uh, the professor Sven Erik Jorgensen, the, the very famous uh, ecological modeling specialist, uh, Stockholm Water Prize winner, in his paper said the ecohydrology building the bridge between ecology and environmental management. Yes, I think it's building the bridge because of course, still underlying that hydrology is fundamental element of the system because abiotic factors are primary of um, importance only when becoming stable, predictable, biota can manifest themselves. So without hydrological background, we cannot really do work too much. And three principles which were mentioned, this is element of, of the story, always we starting from uh, quantification of processes, hydrological processes, quantification of impact, mm -hmm. distribution, spatial distribution, next distribution of ecosystem, as which can be used as a tool for, comp for reduction of impact, <coughs> and ecological engineering for this. So, however, ecohydrology also generate a new tools, completely innovative tools like biotechnology, mm -hmm. because this provide knowledge how to convert form of matter for improving water quality. Why? conversion of form of matter is important because simply all processes not only acceleration water will flow from the catchment now and evaporation but second element we convert organic matter in biomass and in the soil into co2 for example yeah and reducing and this moment change allocation of carbon and just understanding this method and use microorganisms, phytotechnology, we can reverse the negative process. So we can use molecular biology for early warning, cause effect analysis, analyze relationships and biotechnologies. For example, one of example which we're working now when we discussing about the, for example, sediment reduction or organi organic matter transfer is an analyzes how different strains of bacteria can convert the carbon to CO2. Some places we don't need servicing of our purification, like our hydrological system, because if we amplify the process to a certain extent by selection bacteria. First step, enhancement of natural ecosystem. Just using phytotechnology, changing the, the biological structure, we can, we can almost double trapping of phosphorus uh, in, the, in the catchment. And one kilogram of phosphorus is converted in w two tons of algal bloom. So this is really important to, to you combine such elements. And second element, we have di two different fluxes of nutrients. Agricultural land usually generates mm -hmm. lots of nitrogen and human settlements. Phosphorus, which immediately generate beautiful algal blooms. And, and we develop some high efficient barriers here with, with denitrification barrier is b different bacteria enhancement and here geochemical barrier potential combined with this of course geology and barriers are composed in the system so there is not visible and this is denitrification barrier uh, where the, the nitrogen is reduced in up to the 90% so what e we, we, well one of the advantages is ecohydrology. If we express human impact of the, as the concentration of phosphorus in, in the river, nine, 10 is a sewage from the city, for example. Uh, zero, 03 is natural background in primeval forest in Europe. In this moment, there's such a natural system has resistance three times to the level of the, of the what the, today I ask Professor Yamashiki. However, we te by technology, we're focusing on reducing the impact from sewage. But this was a gap between sewage, usually having one, two milligram of phosphorus, and natural 
fluxes from the agricultural landscape, urban stormwater has uh, around 105. And this was gap which provide more than half of load to the reservoir to the sea. So without taking care about this element, even distillation of sewage never will be efficient. And that's why ecohydrology is filling the gap between technology and natural resistance of the system. Okay, so second element, as I said, we need to retain the water, yeah? but not by classical way because stopping a river usually is a, have many negative aspects. But this is an example when the small city near, near which the major asked me if this reservoir is planning on beautiful wild meandering river, which we have a beaver and other other uh, very important animals, can be can uh, will be can be built without because there does not exist algal bloom danger. Of course, after measuring, I said definitely will be blooming if you build like this. But I can tell you how you can build without destroying the natural river and maintaining natural river and you can build on the flat plain, a side reservoir. Additionally, here is not only uh, sequential by filtration system, recreation area, but also special system which is only releasing the clean water because the quality of water is oscillating. So when water is clean, electrodes are measuring and putting in reservoir clean water, but water with high phosphorus is going still, still phosphorus is not toxic for fish. If oxygen is, that's okay. But it's converted phosphorus here in toxic algal bloom. So in this moment, we can combine many elements. We improve water resources because we increase retentiveness of river valley for drought period compensation. Second, biodiversity, because in this moment, some wetlands by the lifting up groundwater level were recovering and also some uh, spawning place appear here. Ecosystem services because we provide recreation area. Additionally, we, I propose here to build up the education center because society education that was in this first lecture this session is fundamental to implement such systemic complex approach. Society must understand at least uh, what what they can achieve from system and that there are certain limitations. And finally, resilience to climate change. This reserve, the capacity of water here is three times more in pumped in groundwater system. So it's if we build on the river, for example, this is not big river. If we build 14 such small dam, there will be completely uh, adaptation, the effect of cl any scenario climate change will be not dangerous because in this moment we already make some mo modeling. And finally, culture education. This is a center for education and uh, I propose to not only give opportunity to see the wild river here, but also put part of the wild river to the big aquarium to show the people how river looks from, from the... This. So, city, now very quickly, city of uh, 21st century, city of the future. This is very important that we have in Europe big problems with water quality all over Europe. There are um, heat islands in the city when they are just, gen we generate asthma allergy. This is one of the system which was built in my city after constructing ecohydrological sequential system. This is and why we build? Because when we analyze alpha benzopurin, it shows that if it's less than 20% green area and no water in the landscape, alpha benzopurin is three times higher than in area where, where it's minimum 30% of the green area with some retained water in the landscape. And in this situation, also the allergy asthma among children is three times higher in such area with this polluter. So city planning has to incorporate, like in Malaysia, the water as a treasure of about qua which determine quality of life. So this is a t approach when in the past there was bottom up, mostly infrastructure element, which was critical for design of the city. Top down, the man, his uh, well-being is already 
key element that this is concept blue green network for city of Łódź, which is on the edge of two catchments so water is rather limited and only small rivers from the past which are containing small water the, the construction of sequential system of high efficiency allowed to construct such small reservoirs and what is the the beauty of this because in constructed wetland, classic constructed wetland, needed 3%, 2% of catchment to really work. However, here is only 0.3% because processes are so intensified and they are all processes which naturally appear in the river. This is only very condensate in the small place. Of course, sometimes are enforced by in hybrid system by engineering solution. So, that some system looks like this in the city before cons using construction some system on all this river was recovered and after construction this this efficiency here is endurance con concentration of suspended matter this is outside what is important the highest efficiency of purification is so constructed this way there is most efficient if high concentration coming middle low concentration of pollutants are less which is not important because they are not so dangerous and just below we have such reservoir. Okay, the second step, we had a cascade of the reservoir in the forest, which was blooming permanently, as I show picture. We construct here some hybrid system when the big fluxes of the were coming. And ecohydrology here was combining engineering and forced by a ecohydrological biofiltration system with some geochemical barrier some uh, geotextiles specially constructed by Technical University Biological, but also increase resilience again by shaping fish community, which is just many predator reduce zooplankton, Euvorus fish, and you see the this middle of July and the water is absolutely clean. This is uh, some uh, way, the many elements of the ca in catchment was used in this EHREC European project and this some elements. This is a cascade of reservoir and as I said the most important is that 20 years ago limnologists were saying that if log lowland reservoir is blooming there is no chance for recovery because catchment surface is so big that it will be now and this as we see we succeed that using this solution especially putting in the system according principles of ecohydrology it works and I will be a little bit imprudent this project get best of the best life project among 60 granted project and application probably was 600 now in European Commission last year and project uh, ECOROP about agricultural landscape was among 10, 10 best projects so the, of course we're going farther more complicated uh, more advanced I would say here loads are more higher and uh, protect the river. The, I, I think there was efficient. We, we developed this with company and company was so satisfied that already bought from us a patent for this type of solutions. And of course we can develop some su for sustainability systemic pro solution. Small sewage treatment plant was not efficient. We provide the sewage as fertilization for biogen energy plantation, create employment opportunity we use the fossil fuel, we create employment opportunity, improve water quality. This is something when this process oriented thinking generate the combination different elements involving society in this. Of course molecular biology, this is uh, uh, element as I mentioned important. This, this knowledge is translated also to Ethiopian conditions. In the Ethiopian program this is for Lake Tana analysis of the, of the threats some some uh, adaptation of the system I will not go details and from the point of view economy because economy is always important you see uh, using only engineering solution we never will get this good ecological status simply because diffuse pollution however they are very important however they have to give combined with the hydrological and biotechnological elements in this moment we can at moderate cost achieve really much better status than only purely in hydroengineering. Finally, in the, when we are talking about education, I think education maybe on the end somebody 
uh, can take into consideration, we not only should teach information, but also knowledge, theory of understanding pattern processes, experimental testing, and translate to wisdom. Use information knowledge to problem solving. And this is something which such transdisciplinary science has to be done. What means how, how evolution of the approach goes from the structure oriented to problem oriented? Conservation, maintaining status quo, restoration enhancement, uh, let's say highly degraded area, ecological engineering, design ecosystem for mutual benefit, ecohydrology regulation, water biota interplay for enhancement ecosystem potential, all catchments still considering conservation, restoration, ecological engineering solutions as element. And from the point of view, the diversity of scientific approach which exists, hydrology putting this into as a background for systemic solution. So conclusion, ecohydrology by integrating knowledge have been providing new dimension. Innovative technologies, dual regulation, biotechnology, hybrid system, civil engineering, systemic solution for enhancement, catchment, sustainability potential. Thank you very much. Thank you.